Phosphorus is an interesting nutrient to manage. We worry about it in the Midwest with high pH soils and tie up. So we'll talk a little today about tie up and how to manage your phosphorus applications so you don't have big issues out on the farm and so you can get the maximum amount out of the phosphorus that you apply. When we look at managing phosphorus in soils, one of the first things that pops out to me is, well, which type of measurement are you gonna to use to look at how much phosphorus will be available? Well, if we're in high pH soils, we like the Olsen bicarbonate test better than we like the results from the Bray test. And the reason why is just the extraction method is a little more accurate as to which amount of phosphorus will be available for you this particular year. All right, let's talk about that Olsen test just a little bit more. What you're probably going to get is a reading that says parts per million. Well, how do you convert parts per million to pounds per acre? That's what we really care about. If you've got six inches of soil, you have roughly two million pounds across an entire acre. So if you've got a parts per million reading on that soil test, let's call it 20. Then just simply multiply times two to get 40 pounds per acre. Now with phosphorus, we also talk an awful lot about phosphate because when you buy phosphorus at any fertilizer dealer, they're going to give you a reading in phosphate. Okay, they're gonna talk all about phosphate recommendations. In fact, if you look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, it will tell you how much phosphate does a crop need. Okay, well, how do you convert phosphorus? I just figured out I have 40 pounds of phosphorus. Well, how much phosphate is that? Is it 40 pounds of phosphate? No, you have to multiply phosphorus times 2.3. Okay, so simply take your figure, whatever that is on phosphorus, multiply that times 2.3, that will tell you how much phosphate you have in the soil. So in this case, you take 40 times 2.3, you get 92 pounds of phosphate. Now you compare that to the total uptake that your crop is going to need. Not just crop removal, but look at total uptake to see, okay, what do I need to have a healthy plant all the way through the season? and that's where you start building your phosphorus recommendation from. Now, the other thing here is if we're in a high pH situation, let's just say that we're at an eight pH just for a round number. Well, that's really high. That's 10 times two alkaline compared to a neutral pH of seven. And if you say, wow, I'd really rather be in the mid sixes, well, it's even more alkaline than that. So we've got a problem. We're gonna have some issues trying to get phosphorus into our roots. So how do you do that? Well, most commonly in high pH soils, we'll utilize the technique of banding. That means keeping that nutrient really close together. And when it's really close together and concentrated, you have less chance of tie up. Okay, we've mentioned tie up a couple times. I just wanna give you a real quick example of that. So let's say we are in high pH soil. Typically in high pH soil, we have a lot of calcium and we do find that phosphate binds with calcium to form calcium phosphate. Unfortunately, calcium phosphate is insoluble in water. It's not going to be available to your plants. That's worst case scenario for you as a farmer. You go spend a bunch of money on your phosphorus and it binds with the calcium so your plant can't even get it. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun, does it? Now, eventually somebody might get that fertilizer out five years, 10 years, 50 years down the road, but you probably won't this year. So how are you going to prevent that type of thing? Like Darren said, banding is one way to do it. The other thing that I look at is, well, let's fix the soil. What's wrong with my soil? How did it end up as a high pH soil in the first place? A lot of times, it's poor drainage. Now certainly there could be other factors too. Maybe it's just erosion, you've got high pH subsoil, but over time you've got to do what you can to get that pH down. So we talk about fixing your drainage first. If you've got drainage fixed, then you might want to take a look at elemental sulfur, maybe some gypsum. You might even need more lime. Get more calcium in total out there. And I know it sounds counterintuitive. What? I may have a calcium problem already. I want more calcium. Well, if you have low calcium, you aren't getting good drainage. You don't have good porosity in that soil. So you've got to get those things fixed. So this is kind of separate from this phosphorus discussion in that, hey, we want to get the pH down, but it all ties back together because if we have that pH in a good range, in the six to seven range, let's just call it, well, phosphorus is a lot more available than when it's over seven and especially over seven and a half. The other thing is looking at phosphorus and, and where you're going to place it. I mentioned putting it in a concentrated band. We've really had good luck with that in higher pH soils and in lower pH soils to be fair too but we like to keep it somewhere where that root system is going to grow. On our farm, we like to use strip-till where we're putting that phosphorus down eight or 10 inches deep, 
directly below where we're going to plant the seed. That way we know that root system is going to grow right through that phosphorus band uh, and we're going to easily access the fertilizer. Another way that's commonly being used is in a two by two. So you place it just to the side of the row. Now if you're out there with your planter, you know exactly where that seed is going to be in relation to the phosphorus. You don't have to rely on GPS and separate applications and a whole bunch of extra steps here. You can do it all at one time. We found a really good success with products like Pro Germinator, for example, that is protected from tie-up and it gives you extended availability throughout the season. So one thing I guess I'll leave you with here is you want to first look at how much phosphorus do you need. And if you say, look, I've got to have 100 pounds of phosphorus or phosphate out there, well, you better make sure you have a lot more than that if you have a higher pH soil. Do some banding. Make sure your rates are really high. Get those levels up there so in time you get all that phosphate that that plant needs into the plant. Then continue to do plant tissue analysis to just see overall how are you doing. It's one thing to look at the soil test, but we really want to look at the plant tissue analysis later on. And hey, if you've got problems, yeah, maybe there's some way to get a little phosphorus out there later in the season. But if nothing else, you can say, hey, going into next year, I'm going to do more to get more phosphate into my plant. One other thing you may be striving to get better at for next year is controlling our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? <music>